So as promised, we are going to look at a simple random walk on F2, namely the free group of rank 2. But since I'm not sure if it has been covered formally in your algebra courses, I'll anyway introduce this group. This would be a very nice example to present actually. So suppose you have two symbols A and B with no relations between them. So when I mean no relations, I mean they are not, for example, AB is not equal to BA and so on. So these are just two symbols. We are completely free. Now F2 would be all possible reduced words of finite length obtained from A, B, A inverse and B inverse. Now what do I mean by reduced words? So I'll make it clear. So what I do is I basically put A, B, A inverse, B inverse, all of these one after the other as many times as I can. This forms words. But I don't write like this, this long thing here. I always write it like this, a b power minus two a cube, just like, like this, okay? But basically I'm putting these four symbols one after the other. We started with two symbols and then I'm talking about the inverses of the symbols and then putting one after the other. But there is one point here though, it's possible to reduce them. Now what is a reduction? An example of reduction is this. Suppose you have this thing, a b square, b minus one, a power minus a b square. In this case, what would happen is that, since b square and b minus one are there, one after the other, this will become b. So you reduce this part to make it b. So if you have b, b and b inverse, you just may write b instead. That's the reduction. Similarly here, you have a inverse, A inverse, A inverse five times, and then you have A, A. You cancel two A's with the A, two A inverses here and write A minus three instead. So this whole word, this whole long word, you just write A, B, A power minus three, and so on. So this is exactly what I mean by reduction. So you have these words, all possible words using A and B, A, B, A inverse and B inverse. Basically, you just write, think of these as your alphabets. And these are, you know, these are, these are, these are the letters in your alphabet. So you, you have four letters in your alphabet. You write all possible words using these. Except that whenever we have a situation like this, whenever is that there is a cancellation possible or a reduction possible, you just reduce it to the form where no reduction is possible, no further reduction is possible. For example, here, no further reduction is possible. So whenever you see an A, which means you see an A, with an A inverse next to each other, you reduce it, you cancel those two. And you just go on doing it till you get a word that cannot be reduced for. Okay. But most importantly, all these words should have finite length in the sense that at a time, you should only use finitely many letters from your alphabet. This gives you all possible reduced words using these symbols. Now, what is the group operation? This will be the group. The operation is you just concatenate the words and then reduce it. So what you do is you put the two words one after the other. And then once you put them, there's a possible reduction, you reduce it. So here is an example. Suppose you have the word a square b cube a minus one b minus two. And then you have the word b square a power four b minus one a square. When you just, what you do is, you put this together. So this, these are the two words you have. So this is one element of F2. This is another element of F2. You put them together. Of course, this B power minus two and B power two can be canceled. So there is a reduction possible. Once you reduce it, it will take this form. But then again, once these two are gone, you still have this A minus one and A4 next to each other. Another reduction is possible. So you reduce it further to write a square b cube a cube because this a power four and a inverse will give you a cube b power minus one a square and no further reduction is possible because there is no no symbol is next to its inverse anywhere in this form so therefore no further reduction is possible so in other words this word dot this word 
is giving you this work. Of course, this is after reduction. So this is the group operation. It can be checked that this group operation, this operation, this operation this on, on the words, this operation makes F2 a group, but it's, a commut it's not a commutative group, simply because AB and BA are not the same. There is no relation between A and B, right? So therefore, AB and BA are different words. So therefore, it's not commutative. And what is the identity element? The identity element is the empty word. You don't use any symbol at all and give the empty word. That's identity. Now, this group has something called a Kelly graph, which I'm going to describe now. So, note that the standard set of generators for F2 is AB. And if you put the inverses in there also, then it's AB, A inverse, and B inverse. So, in other words, any element of the group can be generated from this set. This is called the standard set of generators for the free group of rank two. The Kelly graph is a graph where the vertices are just a set of all possible reduced words, namely F2. And the edges are, you join U with V, U and U, V are both from F2, provided U inverse V is in C. So U inverse is either A or B or A inverse or B inverse. Now, of course, unless we show that graph, it's not easy to see what it is. So here it is. You have E, you would be attached to, so every time you go, your neighbor would be, a, would be another word that you can go just by putting one of the symbols next to it. So in other words, from E, you can go to A, B, A inverse, or B inverse. Now, this will be the direction. This is the direction of A. So therefore, this would be the direction of A inverse. This is the direction of B. So this will be the direction of B inverse. So now suppose you are at A. So from A, this Kelly graph will attach to A square. This is furthermore direction of A. Or AB. This is AB. This yellow point here is AB. Or AB inverse. This is AB inverse. Or AA inverse, which is E. So the neighbors of A would be A square, AB, AB inverse, and E. Similarly, the neighbors of B would be B square, BA, BA inverse, and BB inverse, which is E. So any element, any word U, the neighbors would be UA, UA inverse, UB and UB inverse. That is what is described here. Okay. So these are the edges. Any U will be having an edge width UA inverse, UA, UB inverse, and UB is four. Say so any any point in the graph, so any vertex in the graph will have four neighbors there. And since there is no relation between A and B there cannot be any cycle at all. So this will be, this is called the Kelly graph with respect to these generators. And this Kelly graph would be a four regular tree. Every, every element has four neighbors. Every element has degree four, okay. but there is no cycle at all. So it's a tree, okay. it's a four regular tree. A simple random walk on F2 would be just random up on this graph. What is this? You start at E. So I'm just going to describe it from this picture in words. I'm not going to write you more mathematically here. You start at E, the identity element, which is the empty word. You go to one of the neighbors at random. So you either go to A or A inverse or B or B inverse at random. You choose one of them at random. Wherever you are, say you go to B. Now you choose one of your neighbors and go to that at random. So you either go to B square or B A or B A inverse or E. All of this with probability one fourth. That's your second step. Say you go to B square. Okay, say you go to B square, this is B square. Now you would go to either 
Now you will choose one of the neighbors at random. So you'll either go to BQ or B square A or B square A inverse or just B in the next step. And so on. This will just go on. This process will be repeated. So every time you choose one of the neighbors at random, forgetting whatever you have done in the past. So this is how this random walk will move. So this is again simple random walk because every time you're choosing one of the neighbors at random. So that's why it's a simple random walk on F2. Or you can say it's a simple random walk on the Cayley graph of F2. The same thing. Now we'll come back to this example later and we'll actually show that if you start with E, at least we'll, I'll tell you how to show, it's more or less we'll show. You will start with E and make, you know, go on repeating this process. You will actually only, you will come back to E only finitely many times. With probability one, you will only come back to E only finitely many times. This can be shown. This is because every time you have too many ways, you have every time you have three-fourth probability of moving away from you and one-fourth probability of moving towards. For example, if you're in B square, you have only one-fourth probability of coming to B, which is moving towards. Actually, you have three-fourth probability of moving away from you. And that's why this will only come back finitely many times to you. This will be shown later. Okay, so these are all examples of random box on various groups, actually, which are Markov chains. Now let us give an example that it's not a random walk. To do that, we'll have to recall this notion of discrete convolutions. What is that? So if you have two independent non-negative integer value random variables with probability distributions A and B, then the distribution of x plus y can be obtained as follows. x plus y equal to k is just this quantity here. It's sum from L from 0 to k, L times b of k minus L. So that's because x and y are independent. So x plus y equal to k can happen in one of the following ways. x will be equal to L and y will be equal to k minus L. And L will vary from 0 to k all these possible values. That, that's all possible ways this can happen. Now x and y are independent, so therefore x equal to L and y equal to k minus L, probability of that is equal to the probability of the product of these two probabilities. So therefore, this probability here is the sum of this product of probabilities, and that will eventually give you this sum. Now, in this case, we say that this distribution C, this probability distribution C is the discrete convolution of the probability distributions A and B. And we write C equal to A star B. We discussed this thing in probability theory one course, but I'm just reminding you. Now, easy to check that, first of all, the star is a binary operation, so, uh, uh, operation on the, you know, space of all probability distributions on non-negative integers. Now this binary operation is actually commutative and it's also associative. That's because the addition of random variables is commutative and also associative. So from that, it follows easily that the star operation is commutative and associative. Now for any probability distribution A, we define the end fold convolution a star n, a power star n as follows. You just convolute a n times. a star a is a square, a star a star a is a cube, and so on. If you convolute a n times, that a star power a, a star n. This is the nth, this is called the nth convolution of a, or n fold convolution of a. Now, we also would define this when n is zero. 
So the zero fold convolution will always be defined, whatever A is, it doesn't matter, to be the direct delta probability on zero. So in other words, it, it's the probability that gives mass one on zero. This is because the, 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 the choice, the rationale behind you, this choice is that this happens to be the identity, identity element with respect to this operation star. Why? That's because if you have a random variable, so if, if, if a random variable at distribution delta naught, it means the random variable is degenerate at zero. And the random variable zero, of course, if you add with any random variable, is going to give the distribution of, of x. So if you take any random variable x, add zero random variable with it, you're going to get back x. Right? x plus zero is x. So therefore, this is the identity element. This, and that's the rationale behind choosing this thing. 